Good morning, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Matty Taus. I get to be the lead pastor here at Epiphany, and I get to kick us off into a brand new teaching series called We Don't Talk About That. This series is, is built out of the belief that the church is the place where we should be able to lift the lid on a few conversations and a few topics that we so desperately need to have. That this is the place where Christians should be able to, without any fear, bear any conversation, any topic, and expect to come out of it good things. That we as individuals would profit and benefit if we would be able to bring some of the dark places of our hearts and our souls and have them examined, to have a conversation about them, maybe to even deal with them. But those things don't tend to be true. Church tends not to talk about some things. We tend to cover up some things. So for five weeks, we're just not going to do that. For five weeks, we're going to have conversations about things we need to have conversations about. We're going to talk about things like mental health. We're going to talk about abuse. We're going to talk about sex, and we're going to talk about death. We're going to lift the lid on some of the things that honestly cause us great hurt and great harm and great worry, simply because we choose not to talk about that. This series is built on a core chunk of the Bible that is basically an introduction to who Jesus is and why Jesus gives us any sort of hope whatsoever to be able to have these conversations without them doing anything other than just hurting us some more. So John, one of Jesus' believers, opened up uh, his narrative, his historical account <laughs> of Jesus' life. <laughs> They're fine. That's intentional, we hope. Uh, in, in the book of John, he starts it off in chapter 1. In verse 1, he says this. He says, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created, and this life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. John introduces Jesus as this light that was cast headlong, headfirst into an incredibly dark world. And we're going to unpack the importance of that, not just then, but now, as to how that same Jesus gives us a chance, in contrast, to take our darkness and examine it. So I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you, no matter what you think about church, what you think about Jesus, what you think about Epiphany Station, I want to challenge you to be here for the next five conversations. You might be able to be here, you might be able to watch at home online, but be here for every single one because... You've already picked your topic that you don't want to talk about. Of the five I've mentioned, of the four I've mentioned, you don't want to talk about one of them, and that's the whole point. That's why we need to be here, because we need to. We need to talk about mental health, your mental health, the mental health of our children and our families and our churches and our community. We need to be able to talk about abuse, that it happens in more ways and more often than probably what we'd be comfortable accepting. We need to talk about sex, how it was created to be so good, yet it can be so very bad for us. And we need to talk about death, the thing that we all face, that looms over us all, that causes some great anxiety, but others seem to have a peace about it. We need to do this because we need to start banning the phrase, we don't talk about that. We need to get rid of it in church. We need to get rid of it in our homes. We need to talk about this. So to start, what we are going to do is we're going to talk about why we can talk these things out, why we can lift the lid and it be good, why we can have hope that it can be good. And we're going to talk about the contrast to the dark by first talking about the light, the light that John introduces that shines in the darkness, Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus is a very interesting word to say. I remember it even when I was a young lad and I didn't believe anything about what Jesus said, but still... Name of Jesus, it's a weird one. Can we be honest about that? It doesn't feel too natural on the lips and on the tongue. Just say it to yourself now, quietly. Said Jesus. Felt weird, didn't it? Let's be honest. There is something weird about it. Because the name of Jesus seems to always rouse some sort of internal or external response. Like someone says the name of Jesus and sometimes walls go up. There's a discomfort with the name. Some people say Jesus because they're angry or because they're shocked or because they're hurt. Some people, when they use the name of Jesus, have their interviews cut short on media outlets. Some people, when they say the name of Jesus, have their lives cut short. And here in the U.S., we, even in the church, still have a discomfort with freely using the name of Jesus. And we have that problem because it's not supposed to be an easy name. 
because it is not a name like others. One of Jesus' followers, Paul, actually said and had it written down, look, it's not just the name, but the name he was given is the name above all names. It's supposed to be different. It's supposed to kind of poke and prod at us a little bit. It's supposed to bring out of us emotion. It's supposed to bring out of us intellectual debate. It's supposed to challenge us, the name of Jesus, and it does. It said the name of Jesus, and something positive might come up within you. Something negative might come up within you, but something will, because it is that important. Jesus was that influential. Jesus was that impactful to the degree that even those who don't believe know that he is. In 2013, Time Magazine did a, an, an analytical, statistical analysis on the most impactful, significant figure in human history. Top spot, Jesus Christ. The most significant person who has ever existed is Jesus. And that is why we need to talk about that. We need to talk about why. Why do people who don't even believe in him view him significant? Why do we struggle with the name? Why is the church dumbing down the name and what it means? Why can't we treat it just like any other name? And as you unravel that, as you unpack that, you can start to understand and see that the problem with Jesus and the problem with his name is not a new problem at all. In fact, when Jesus was walking the earth, there were a group of people that hated the name so much, they killed him for it because of what he said about himself. They thought that would kind of get rid of the problem, but a few weeks later, people are still talking about him. People are still saying that something is going to happen, something is going on with this Jesus character, to the point that a couple of his followers, Pete and John, are walking down the main avenue, and they end up healing a guy who's been lame for decades, and they say it happened in the name of Jesus. And the leaders of the local religion didn't like that. Here's their response to someone being miraculously healed. They said, what should we do with these men? We can't deny that they've performed a miraculous sign, and everyone in Jerusalem knows about it. But to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, we must warn them not to speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. So they called the apostles, those who had seen Jesus and believed in Jesus, they called the apostles back and told them, commanded them, never again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. Apparently it was not enough to kill him. Apparently they needed to wipe out his name. Still his name was getting under their skin. It was rattling and riling those who had enjoyed power and prosperity. And, and, prosperity for so long. And they said, you must never, never again say the name of Jesus. And Pete and John's response, no. No, we cannot. Do you think that God wants us to listen to you rather than to listen to him? We cannot, we will not stop talking about everything that we have seen and have heard. And you fast forward, and they didn't stop to the point that just another chapter later in Acts 5, description of the early church they had to call them back in, brought the apostles back in, and they gave them a whipping. They had them flogged, and they said again, we command you never to speak again in the name of Jesus. Now it goes beyond words. Now it goes beyond threats. It goes to a flogging. It goes to a beating. It goes to torture. And this was Peter and John's response. From that day, every day, in the temple, from house to house, they continue to teach and preach this message. Jesus is Messiah. Day to day, house to house, over and over and over and over again. It's the thing that Peter was killed for. It's the thing that John was tortured and exiled for. This thing that makes people so mad, that drives them into fury, that they would flog another human being for saying the name. That they would bludgeon them to death with big rocks, that they would throw them off the top of buildings. It is this reason that in 2016, in a small church in Normandy, France, a few guys walked in and they slit a pastor's throat for it. This name of Jesus, Jesus the Messiah, that is the thing that refuses to go away, that refuses to be ignored. Because it's not just that Jesus existed, that's not what boils the blood. It's what his name means, what Jesus the Messiah means. Because Messiah means this. It means that he was prepared for something, that he was chosen for something, that he was anointed for something. And what he was prepared for is what caused the uproar. Because he came to do something that we don't want him to do. He came to tell us something that, honestly, we don't want to hear. 
This is the message that John and Peter had been sharing throughout Jerusalem that caused people to be so unbelievably riled up. Continuing on in Acts 5, this is what they had to say. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on a cross. Then God placed him in the place of honor at his right hand as prince and savior. He did this so the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. This is where the rubber meets the road, and when it does, it squeals. Because the name Messiah basically meant that Jesus was going to come and deal with something. As John introduces him, he says that he's light shining in the darkness. And the implication of that is that there's darkness. And sometimes we think, well, that's good because Jesus needs to come and light up this very dark world. But that's not what he came to do. He's not here to light up alleyways and dank buildings. Jesus came to shine light into dark souls, into dark hearts. And that, my very much loved ones, is where we come in. And this is where we hear what the religious leaders heard, what we really don't want to hear. We are dark. We are sinful. And that sin has darkened us towards God. And that sin thing, it's just the evil part of you. It's there. It ebbs and it flows and it rises and it falls, but it's constant. The thing that wants to lead you away from him. And that thing, that sin thing, is exactly what the Messiah said he was going to come and deal with. To tell us that it's there. That there is a sin separation. That really sin means we choose to walk away from what God has said and what he has done. We choose to leave him behind. And we can do that. God lets us do that because he won't play second fiddle. He won't be second favorite to any other desire we might have. And because of that, we walk away. And sometimes, oftentimes, we then find ourselves separated, divided, shrouded in darkness. That's the very thing God was not content with. And so enters into human history the most influential, the most impactful, and the most important person ever to you. Because Jesus came to save sinners who know they're sinners and don't want to be anymore. He came to shine a light on the dichotomy between a life lived in sin and darkness and a life lived in light and God's way. He said, look, there's two ways to go about this. Honestly, just two. God's way or not. And for those of us who can see that we're living in the not, Jesus made a way so we can come back. See, every sin, every decision to walk from here away from God is a decision to walk away from not just light, but life. God is the one who created and sustains you. To walk away from him is to say, I want no sustenance. I want no life. I want no breath. So that's why every sin naturally will result in death. That very thing is what Jesus came to mediate. He came to mitigate, to be able to give an unearned offer of forgiveness and grace. And that's what he came to do and place in our hands to accept or to reject. And then we get to decide how will we respond. Will I take on the name of Jesus like it means something? Will the existence, will the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ mean what it is supposed to mean to me? What he brought it to mean to me? Or will I not? Because if you will not, if I will not, then it will forever just be that awkward name. It'll be that uncomfortable name. It could grow to be that hated name because it will continue to tell you one thing about you, that you need him, that you so desperately need him. So as we walk through this series and we unpack topic after topic of, of abuse and of sex, of mental health and of death, this is what we have to come back to, that there is a possibility for light to be shone into those dark areas. It doesn't matter what you bring in with you, what you have done or what has been done to you, everything gets to have the lid lifted and for Jesus to shine light into it, if we should so choose. So every week, the the step to take will be the same, to respond to Jesus. We will choose in our hurt, in our hardship, in our difficulty, in our pain, what will we do with Jesus and what he said. And we will respond. Every single one of us will respond in one way or the other. How will you respond to the life of Jesus Christ, to say that he was born? How will you respond to the fact that people say that he performed miracle after miracle after miracle? 
that he taught that we're sinners in need of saving. The people killed him, and then he didn't stay dead. How will you respond? Because your entire life will always and forever be bound up in how you view Jesus' life. And this question that seems to just never want to go away, what to do with Jesus? Responding to him might, may, probably looks very different for every single one of us, depending on where we're at. For some of you, you might be in here this morning, and you know there is one specific dark thing in your life that continues to wreck and ruin. You don't want it to do that anymore. The response to Jesus would be to have a conversation with him, with someone from his family. I want to talk about that. I want to hear what Jesus has to say about that, that thing that has happened to me. That thing that was done to me, that thing that I have done, I want to talk about that. I don't want it under the surface anymore. For some of us, we daily, time and again, person after person, event after event, we face darkness. In other people's lives or just what we come into interaction with in our culture. We need to respond to Jesus by knowing, not thinking, but knowing that we have the Prince of Heaven in our corner. We have the savior of mankind that's calling us to face the darkness, not to hide away from it, not to be scared of it, but to go and do something about it. For some of us, responding to Jesus means simply acknowledging his name, using his name, allowing his name to be part of your vocabulary, to be part of your conversation in your home, in your church, in your life. And then I know There are some of you that need to respond to Jesus by trusting him. By trusting him to be who he says he is. By trusting him with the dark corners of your life. To trust him with your life. To ask him to be savior of that life. To not allow that soul to continue going down the road that it is going down. Because that darkness will not go away unless we embrace the light. It will forever be there because God gives that offer continuously. The light is there for us to be able to shine into every single dark nook and cranny. So as we wrap up this conversation, as we continue through this series, your challenge will be how will you respond today on a daily basis? I'm going to invite the music team and I'm going to invite the prayer team to come up because they're going to lead us as we finish off here. Our prayer team is here always at the end of the last song and through the end of the experience for people to be able to talk to, to be prayed for. And I'm going to ask you to make one of three specific steps in responding to Jesus to lift the lid this week. I'm going to ask you as, maybe I'm your friend, maybe I'm your pastor, maybe I'm a complete stranger. But I'm going to ask you to do something, to not allow whatever God is trying to do in your life this morning just to be closed again. One challenge I'm going to give you is to talk about that. This thing of Jesus is is kind of getting under your skin. Or you need questions answered, talk about that. It's why we have our amazing prayer team. It's why they're here, to do that with you, for you. It's why we have an ability to connect with things like Jesus 101 on a Wednesday night. Created specifically so that you can come to a place with your questions. It's there so that you can ask some people about this Jesus thing. And as always, if you want someone from our leadership team to get in touch with you, that's why we have our connection cards in the stands and at the welcome station, so you can talk about that. We want to do everything that we can to help you lift the lid on some of these things that continue to be a problem, that continue to hurt. Because here's God's promise. Here's the promise of the series, the promise of your life. That in the beginning, Jesus already existed. Jesus was with God and Jesus was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. Jesus gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. No problem you face, no mental health affliction, no abuse that you have gone through. No sex pain that you experience, no death that you fear, extinguishes the light of hope that Jesus has to offer you. That's what he has to offer. That's what he wants for your life. I want to pray for you guys. If you want to pray with me, go ahead. Father God, we thank you that we get to come and talk to you, not in 
in dead words, not in just speaking to a wall, but in, in seeking response, desiring to hear back from you, that we get to come and ask of you in Jesus' name. We get to seek forgiveness in Jesus' name. We get to seek to be righteous in Jesus' name. We get to be saved in Jesus' name. God, I would ask that you would not let us walk out of here unprovoked by Jesus' name. That we would be pulled into feeling more, to thinking more, to experiencing more what the name of Jesus has always come to do. To challenge us to respond. Help us to intentionally respond today and the day after and the day after. Not to allow this just to go away. Not allow us to close the lid. Not allow us to get cluttered with the rest of life. God, we thank you that we get to talk to you. We thank you that we get to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.